Penn State cornerback Joey Porter Jr. recently declared for the 2023 NFL Draft, and he's getting a lot of buzz as a top-of-the-first-round type of guy. Today, we're going to take a look at his prospect profile, where I see him landing in the draft, and much more. Let's get into it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back for another 2023 NFL Draft Prospect Profile. We have been doing these now for quite some time, so make sure you subscribe, like this video if, if you enjoy it, and then, as always, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on Joey Porter Jr., maybe some guys you want me to talk about in future editions of these prospect profiles. However you want to comment, feel free to do so. Today, we are going to be talking about Joey Porter Jr. The title of this video is Like Father, Like Son, meaning I think pretty highly of Joey Porter Jr. I think he does a lot of things really, really well, and I think over his four years in college, he has definitely improved in a lot of different ways. So if you've never watched one of these prospect profiles, we go over some of their numbers, go through their scouting report, and sometimes give a little bit of a comp, like an NFL comp. Unfortunately, I don't really have a good one for Joey Porter Jr. I see a lot of a, a, a blend of a lot of different corners, and so it's pretty difficult to kind of put that into perspective. But let's get into the numbers. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is he's 6'2", 198 pounds. So when you're thinking about a, a, a traditional cornerback one, a guy that can go be a lockdown guy on the outside, normally you're thinking of a taller corner, a guy that can use his length to kind of win in in physical ways and also have the athleticism to kind of keep up with with wide receiver ones. We'll talk about some of his strengths and weaknesses, but I did want to highlight that because that is important as we get into the next portion. By the numbers, though, 33. That was his 24-7 sports ranking, and that was not overall. That was He was the 33rd rated corner in his class. Uh, he was a four-star prospect, so still regarded pretty highly. Um, but yeah, he, he wasn't really, you know, to have an NFL name, sometimes those guys get boosted up. That didn't really happen with Joey Porter Jr. because he's been talented. And now we're kind of seeing that they may have been a little low on him comparatively, right? Uh, nine, nine pass breakups in 2022. So you'll see a lot of people are going to pick apart his lack of interceptions, Um don't worry about it. Uh, we'll we'll get into exactly why you should not worry about that. And then 50%, his uh, completion percentage against. He doesn't get targeted very often, to be completely honest. A lot of people don't go his way, but when they do, this is this is why they don't go his way. Because, it's. I mean, they're only completing 50% of balls. I believe uh, receivers against him caught 15 out of 30 balls. So he had a... a or an NFL passer rating against in the 60s as well. So overall, Joey Porter Jr. put together a fantastic senior season. It's important to recognize that he was a senior as well because I, there was a, a really good chance for him or an opportunity for him to declare last year. I think he was getting some buzz as like a day two guy, but it turns out I think he did the right thing because now we're looking at him as a potential top half of the first round type of guy. And I actually think um, there's a chance that he's the first corner off the board. I know a couple other guys are getting some buzz. Christian Gonzalez, Keely Ringo has been kind of up there for a while, but uh, I think that Joey Porter Jr. has a, as well a shot as any of those guys to be the first corner off the board. And let's talk about why. So scouting report for Joey Porter Jr. Strengths, length, versatility, ball skills, fluidity, weaknesses, tackling, and elite instincts. So first one, length. As you can see from this photo, if you are watching on the YouTube and not just listening, uh, this guy has some long arms. I don't know his official arm length yet. I'm very excited to see him in the pre-draft process so we can get some of those measurements. But it stands out on this film that he can use his length, and he uses his length very well. That's, I think, the main thing. There are some guys that are super long that don't really know what to do with it, and I would argue over the first two and a half ish years of Joey Porter Jr.'s career, that was kind of him. He doesn't, he wasn't a, a physical enough player for my liking. I didn't think that he would jam receivers. And when he's got all of that length 
to remain balanced it is traditionally fairly easy because he's able to kind of get his paws on someone before he's you know diving at them kind of falling off balance and he has done a fantastic job at developing those skills developing his technique and using those long arms versatility so joey porter jr is not a guy that's going to be confined to one scheme and i think that we do see that in certain uh, in certain cornerback prospects. I, I can think of a few over the last few years, but I don't think that that's him because it, Penn State runs a pretty versatile defensive scheme. And honestly, last year, he they didn't put him in a lot of uh, press man coverage because that just wasn't something that they were running a whole lot. And so we saw his ability in zone, and I thought, you know, that could get a little better. Uh, but this year he has gotten a... a ton better in man coverage alone and he has improved in zone coverage i think you can drop him into a cover three scheme and i think he can be successful i think you're gonna do best putting him in a mostly man coverage scheme where you can say go beat this guy with your length with your uh in instincts or with your fluidity things like that uh and with your ball skills so let's get into that ball skills thing because like I said, people are going to pick apart his lack of interception total. Uh, I believe he had one in his career. Uh, that's not a problem, though. His ball skills are pretty fantastic. I will say, you know, again, junior year to senior year, he made a massive, massive jump where I had some concerns about his ball skills a little bit before this year. And the, the nine pass breakups are, and, and I would argue, you could probably credit him with a few more. I think some got credited as drops, but he he was fantastic when when in coverage. So I don't think you have to worry about that. He may not be a high interception total guy because he traditionally does like to bat at the ball, but that's okay. That's that's the the makings of a really good cornerback, um, even if it's not as flashy as Trayvon Diggs, you know. Uh, and then fluidity, I think. There are some valid concerns that Joey Porter Jr. isn't the fastest guy in the world. I think he's going to test better than his play speed is, but he does have really nice fluidity. He flips his hips really well. Uh, he's able to recover really well if, if he does maybe get beat on a route. Um, and he, he does close pretty well in when he's in zone coverage. He closes down pretty well. But the problem is, even when he's closing down, he does not tackle very well. And I think that some teams are going to be kind of upset with that. Um, it has gotten better this year. I, I will say that, but this is a, definitely an area where he's going to have to learn how to tackle. Now, I put a little less weight on tackling now than I may have in the past. I think that if you're a great tackling corner that can also cover, that's great. If you're a corner that can cover, you won't need to tackle a whole lot. Um, of course, he'll be down in run fits and things like that, and that's where you'd like to see him improve. But I think that's where he has improved this year is kind of getting his nose dirty a little bit and taking on blockers. I, I think he's done a little bit better with that, but it is an area of improvement, and it's something that teams will probably pick apart uh, in his pre-draft process. And then elite instincts, and specifically in zone coverage. I think when he drops into a zone, I think he's still learning how to feel the field. And I think also he's he's learning how to feel and trust his teammates. And so when that comes off on his film, it kind of looks like he may get himself into no man's land a little bit. He may be a little bit out of position in zone coverage. Uh, but th that stuff's going to come. I, I do think that instinctually he made strides this year you can tell with experience that this is going to be an area of growth for him and i think that we're going to see that growth uh over his first few years in the nfl now it is very important to remember that cornerback is i would argue the second hardest position maybe even the first hardest uh the, the hardest position to uh, play at the nfl level it's you're at a very clear disadvantage but one mistake i made on on last year's uh, like in, in last year's class was I knocked sauce Gardner for how physical he was and how he used his length and how he uh, two hand jammed everyone, uh, which is something that Joey Porter jr. Traditionally doesn't do, but occasionally does. And then he kind of rides receivers through the first five to six yards of, of routes. And that was something that sauce Gardner did. And that was something that 
I, I missed on Sauce Gardner. I thought that he was going to be the most penalized rookie. I thought that he was going to struggle to adapt to a, a stricter def, uh, defensive pass interference type of system than, than in college. And that hasn't been the case. And so when I look at what Joey Porter Jr. has been able to do in using his length and being more physical and jamming receivers at the line of scrimmage and then kind of riding them through their routes, I think that that's going to be pretty translatable. And I think that he is going to be more of an impact starter when he gets on the field in his rookie year than some others. I don't think he's a Patrick Sertan, Sertan level prospect. I don't think he's even a JC Horn level prospect. But I do have him graded as a quality NFL starter. I think this is a guy that could be a, a Pro Bowl player uh, down the road. Um, I think he has a little bit of developing to do to get there. I don't think I'd be super comfortable projecting him to that level just yet. But I think this is a really good player that's going to go in the top 15 to 20 picks in the 2023 NFL draft. So the title of this, Like Father, Like Son, that is just me saying I think that Joey Porter Jr. is going to have a long uh, and, and very good NFL career. Maybe not as good as his father, but I think that he is going to be a very good NFL player and a guy that is going to have a nice pre-draft process because as we start to get those arm length things, as we start to find out exactly how fast he is and, and all of those explosives and things like that, the fluidity, that's all going to come into play. I think that we're going to see this kid's draft stock skyrocket even more. And I have seen him mocked inside the top 10. When Kevin and I did our mock draft for football guys about a month ago or so now, we put him in the top 10. And I think that there are a lot of teams within that top 10 that need corners. And so we could see him come off the board very, very early. So that is it for this video. Let me know what you think of Joey Porter Jr. Let me know what other prospects you want me to talk about down in the comments. Remember, please like and subscribe. Uh, we do post a video Monday through Friday at, at the very least. We've been hitting Saturdays as well. Uh, and also, if you're looking for more content, we do have a Patreon. Later today, we will have some news about a college football bowl guide, so check that out as well, uh, and thank you guys for watching. Until next time.